Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. I'm going to try and do this video without making it too jerky and all of that, but uh, we'll see how that goes. I have promised the guys on House of Home Light that I would do a video on why I prefer to use a chain grinder to any other method of sharpening my saws. Now obviously on the hill this isn't available. I can sharpen by hand. I can do a pretty pretty decent job not using uh, file guides. I've got all the fun stuff. Got some original home light file guides that have the angle markings on them. I've got the later Oregon ones that are marked a little goofier. Well not goofier but more angles. You got to keep an eye on those depending on what you want. Got just the regular files. My job box has them for the hill, but when I get back here, I like to clean it up. This is the chain off my Super 2. Get that some time to focus. You can see, I hope. Yeah, I knew zooming like this was going to be hard. There's some wear. I definitely hit a little bit of dirt last time I was out cutting, so I'm going to dress this up. So this grinder, I don't remember what the model is. In a way, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna, there we go. That's a quick shot of that. Basically, if you get the Northern Tool Catalog, you've seen this grinder. It's a clone of the Oregon 510 or 511, if I remember correctly. Uh, Hell, a lot of the parts interchange. I've literally ground hundreds of chains on this thing. The only part I've ever had fail is that tension spring. Well, guess what? That tension spring that I replaced it with is from an Oregon model. So, anyway. This is a nice one. It has your back tilt here. This is the angle that you're putting on your, uh, your top plate. 60 degrees is kind of the standard. Uh, if you're going to do a ripping chain for milling it's something different and I don't know that off the top of my head because I don't do milling at this time. <clears throat> More importantly to me this has the tilting deck. So when you're doing full chisel chain with a round grind like this is going to put on it you need to tilt the tooth towards the stone a little bit. So if this was full chisel chain I would f tilt this deck I'm set up to grind this cutter which would be what a right hand cutter I suppose I would tilt the deck 10 degrees line that hatch up to here facing the stone and that's going to put a slightly different compound angle on this that gives you a better cut you don't have to do that but it is a noticeable difference uh, let's see other details rounded edge I don't know how well this is going to show the actual profile of that wheel these come with a template, or a, a little plastic all gauge, and of course a dressing stone. I've found if you flip the wheel every couple times you use it, it tends to wear evenly, and I have to redress these very little. This is the 3 16 wheel that goes on uh, for the, the 3 8 and 404 chain. This is the 1 8th for the 3 8 low profile, and uh, I usually use that for 325 chain as well. So, get this out of the way. I think we're about ready to start the grinding. I grind my chains, my 3 8 low profile. I grind them at 30 degrees. I know some steels and huskies are 35, and I know on some some of Oregon's literature they've even gone to 35, but I don't like it personally. Uh, it's too much of an angle. I don't just don't feel that it cuts as nicely or stays sharp quite as long. It's a personal opinion. So that's how you adjust this. You just loosen that knob back and forth. Obviously this direction is for cutting the right hand cutters, this one for the left. Very, very simple. 
when you get it set up right with this centering screw you don't have to adjust the depth as you go from side to side. I don't have this 100% right. I usually have to back this off or spin it in about half a turn when I go side to side. But I've gotten used to it so I don't mess with it. This is your your depth gauge that controls how much you're going to take a bite out as you come down. And obviously this is set for something very different. A different chain. You can see that giant gap there so that'll have to be adjusted. This just adjusts your, your key in and out as you go, and you want to get that right. You can see that there are times that I have not, and I've ground a little bit out of it. Not what you want to do. So, let me get this set up. I think there's good enough light here to see as I'm doing this. It's again getting close, but you can also see the height is off there. I'm not actually getting down to the tooth, which means I'm going to need to reduce that a little bit. Okay, now I'm sitting in the gullet. Set screw is just tight on the mount there. So by lucky guess, it looks like I've got that just about right. And where it's sitting isn't quite touching the wheel. So I'm going to give it a tad more. See if that did it. This is a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot quicker when uh, you're not holding the camera. Heard that grind, it tried to lift. So what I'm going to do is attempt to find something that'll hold this camera tripod and not make a giant crash if I drop it. Let's see how this goes. Grind a few of these teeth. Here we go. A little shop stool. For the safety sheriffs out there, yes, these are actually safety glasses. The ones here in the shop, the clear ones are destroyed, so these are a combo. Sunglass and safety glass. Huh. This would help if it was plugged in all the way. going a little too deep. There we go. So you can see the fresh grind. The edge, this is semi-chisel chain, so even though I got some garbage built up on here, that off. You can see it's a nice corner. There's no burrs. And when I run my thumb across that, it catches. And it's not razor sharp, but it's sharp. We'll do a couple more here. See, that one took more off. I didn't change this setting, but what that means is when I was out in the field and I dressed this up, the first tooth I did must have had a little more damage than this tooth, so I filed a bit more off. Even counting strokes, it's not a perfect method. thing on that one.
I could just jam the wheel down and let it cut, but this reduces heat and the likelihood you're going to explode a grinding wheel. Let's go slow. With the garbage on here on the teeth that built up, I can tell when it gets hot because that sawdust will turn kind of a brownish black. Thankfully, I didn't hit any rocks. If you come across a tooth that has been rocked, and you don't start with it, you may end up getting halfway through your grinding and realize, oh crap, i got to take more off. So it takes more time that way. In general, you want to find your worst damaged tooth, and it doesn't matter which side of the chain, and start with that one. And you do that whether you're hand filing or machine filing. That's just... A best practice. Okay, that's all the right hand cutters. So now, to demonstrate why I do this, let me zoom this in just a tad, or why I like doing it this way. I'm going to get my caliper out and I'm going to see if these are all the same size within reason. And that's really what you want for a number of reasons. It'll be a smoother cut and your guide bar is going to wear evenly. If you have teeth that are longer on one side or the other, you're going to end up with abnormal wear on your bar. It's going to wear to one side and then you'll start getting crooked cuts. All right, almost tight. Looks like this tooth, right there, with that 5.27 millimeters or not quite 0.21 inches. And this tooth, right there, just a nice tight fit. This tooth, same thing. So again, that's the consistency that you're looking for. Uh, so what I'm going to do is save this setting when I flip this base over to grind the other side. That's going to put the grinding wheel slightly close, the tooth slightly closer to the grinding wheel. Now that's barely hitting at all. So I may have to adjust that in, and it's possible that this side has gotten filed down a little more than the other. So I may have to sharpen this and go back and sharpen this side again, because I didn't follow my own common sense rules and figure out which side was shortest first. But anyway, I, know, I may have to zoom this back out, but I want to really get that if I can, to focus... Oh yeah, that's way too far, man. Jeez. I was not born to be a cinematographer. That should be blatantly obvious by now. Yeah, that's... not working. The light in the shop is not right. And my skills at this aren't right. There we go. Nice sharp teeth. So anyway... That's why I prefer to grind like that. Again, this has taken way longer. I'm seeing 14 minutes on this video, which is utterly ridiculous. Uh, the time to take it off that little Super 2 and grind it out of here, five minutes at tops. So, again, it's not for everybody, but if you do a lot of cutting, and you do a lot of cutting in wood that has got dirt or rocks, you know, oak, uh, logs that have been skidded, things like that, it might be worth the investment. You can get them for around 150 bucks on eBay like this. 
I built the stand myself and of course I've added some stuff onto it the chainsaw mount for working and all of that but anyhow folks that's a little narrative of why I like to use a chain grinder 